Welcome back to our Got Wire. Today I have this APC 42U rack that I picked up on Facebook Marketplace. Believe it or not, for free. It just took me some time and about an hour south of me, an hour back, and some gas. So technically it wasn't free, but I didn't have to pay anything to get it from the guy, which is a heck of a deal. And as you can see, I'm installing it here in my garage. I'm taking that bundled mess of wire that I have up in my garage attic and running it down through a hole through this PVC pipe through the ceiling into the top of my rack. It came with two PDUs in it, a 240 volt PDU, and a 120 volt PDU. And they both came with special connectors. So I'm in the process of running the electrical wire and the receptacles for those electrical connectors. It's an L520P connector, but I'll show you a close up of the inside of the rack and what all it came with. So the rack did come with a key so you can lock this. Not that I'd wanna lock it out in my garage. And it does have adjustable rails in here so you can adjust the back rail and the front rail. I got a net gear a uh, gigabit switch here with two uh, RJ4510 gig ports and two SFP plus ports in here. I just got it racked up, connected to the 240 volt. And as you can see, 42U starts down here at the bottom. And it did have two UPSs in it, but he took out the UPSs and that's what I have left. He just left the rails in here. So if I had a server without rails, I could put it on those two. And then it also came with this tray here that extends all the way back. So I can set a computer or whatever I want on that tray. So that was nice that it came with that. And then it came with this tray here in the back. Now for the 240 volt PDU, which is back there on the right. I'll show you here on the, when I do the back. You need a special connector for it, which is this. It looks like a computer PSU port, but backwards. And then it goes to this right here. So when you're powering your devices with 240 volt, make sure the power supplies can accept it. On the back of this one, it said 120 or 240. So I went ahead and plugged this one in. That's what that power cable is there in the back and it's plugged into the PDU there on the back corner. Now, it also came with this top one here, which is 120, but I have to install that special receptacle. And then that 240 volt PDU, it also has this connector, which is a higher amperage connector. It has them um, about every fifth outlet. And then it, the other end of it is just a normal power connector. And this is for, you know, servers that draw more power. And as you can see here, this is the 240 watt PDU. You just plug your cable into here. And then I ran it up and plugged it into the back of my switch there. And then the PDU cable just goes through the brushes here in the top. There's brushes on the left and the right. And this is where I'm gonna run my Cat 5s through. And as you can see, I already started cutting a hole in my ceiling. That hole is where this PVC is gonna go. And then I'm gonna attach a clamp to it with a piece of wood. And then Velcro all the cables from that hole down down to the top of the server. So it also came with this tray here. This is a 2U tray. I got my rack studs on it. These are way better than these shitty cage nuts and screws. And that's actually what I have that switch held up with is some rack studs. And then like I said, this PDU up here is an APC PDU and it runs down to the special connector. This one is the 120 volt one. And then this one here is the 240 volt uh, connector. I already installed it. It's just a twist lock. You twist and pull and it almost looks the same as the other one. So if you don't have these, if you do get a PDU with these, you're gonna have to hire an electrician or do it yourself to install these receptacles. And on the back of this rack, these two doors here, to shut and then you turn the handle to lock it. So as you can see, it's a pretty big server rack. Uh, if you do find something like this, make sure you clear it with your other half because mine almost strangled me, but she wasn't too mad because it was free. But I'm gonna go ahead and get started installing this conduit up top. These are some big clamps I'm gonna use to attach it to the wall. And then I'm gonna get started running all my ethernet cables down to this rack. And I'm currently doing it at night. That way everybody's asleep and I won't hear any whining from people that the internet's down because they're all asleep. So I'll try to maybe throw together a time lapse of me installing all this, or I'll probably just do bits and pieces here and there, and then I'll show you guys the final product. So I got the two by four screwed to the wall here. This is what I'm gonna mount the pipe to. And then I get, like I said, I got the hole there. These were just marking the studs out here. So I'm gonna take those off. And then as you can see, we'll shove the pipe up here and then I'll just secure it just like that.
Well, there we go. I got the pipe mounted and the clamp on it, so it's not going anywhere. Now all I have to do is run the wires down, which is gonna be the hard part. So this is still a mess, um, but I'm working on cleaning it up. I'm shortening up all the cables. I'm gonna uh, use some Velcro and Velcro all those cables down to the little patch panel that I have here. And then I bought a bunch of pre-mades to run from here down that pipe behind this AC line. And this is my current network here. <laughs> I just have everything plugged up and this switch just sitting up here. And yes, it is storming outside but I have all my cameras plugged into here and all my hardwired stuff in the house plugged into here temporarily until I can get this moved down to the rack and get all that hooked up and the short patch cables ran through the pipe. And that's all the 20 foot patch cables that I ordered. They're all Cat 6. And then I'm just using patch panels in here. There's some be RJ45 Keystone pass through. And then I'm gonna use short six inch cables to go from the Keystone to the switch. So I'm gonna have a patch panel on the bottom of the switch, patch panel on the top. Here's a little, little bit closer view. Like I said, I got my uh, Unraid box here running uh, MB instead of Plex or Jellyfin. Yes, I know I need to clean it, it's dirty. Um, but I just have it sitting on the shelf that it came with. It's a big long shelf I got it sitting on. I just slid it in there. And then I have my Netgear switch here. I'm using rack studs, because I love rack studs. Uh, if you haven't used them, go ahead and get you some. I'll link them down in the description. And then these are both 10 gig links for my server. And then they go to the 10 gig SFP plus ports here on the switch and then these are all PoE. These are my two cameras outside This is for the uh, cloud key gen 2 and then this one right here I have a little raspberry pi up here running uh, Open media vault and it's PoE powered. I got a little PoE hat on there And then I'm just using a little external drive just to mess around with open media vault and then I have my 120 uh, PDU back there and then on the back right you can't really see it uh, you kind of can I have the server plugged into the 240 volt PDU back there. And I got the electrical jacks wired up over here. I'm not gonna show you that because anytime you show electrical on YouTube, people freak out and everybody's an electrician. This is my Unify Cloud Gateway Ultra. This is for my backup internet. I have the Verizon whole home internet upstairs and I have a cable running down to here. And then this cable here runs over to the switch. I have these two, last two ports on a VLAN and then that's what powers the access point for this. And eventually I'm gonna move my backup internet from this to my PF Sense box, which I still have to set somewhere in here. It's a full PC box that I installed PF Sense on, so I'm gonna put that in here eventually. I'm not done. I'm probably gonna put out a part two of this video. So as you can see, I'm not done with this rack install yet. I still have to run all the wires down and finish the patch panel. Uh, that's why all these wires are sitting here in the bottom. So I'll probably make a part two to this video and show you guys the full setup, you know, a short part two video, show you the completed project of where I put everything and how I have everything routed from upstairs down to here. So that'll be coming in future videos. So if you're not subscribed, go down there and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on that. And then also too, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on my giveaway at a thousand subscribers. Trend Network has sponsored a giveaway and they have gave me a PoE tester to give away. So thank you Trend Networks for that. And all the products that I've used here including my 3D printer for my 3D print mounts that I have for the Switch and my Cloud Key Gen 2. I'll try to link the print files down in the description and I'll try to link a Amazon affiliate link to my 3D printer. It doesn't cost you guys anything more to use those links down there. It just helps me out. I get a little bit of kickback when you click on that link. If you have any questions, comments, you think I should do something different, leave them down in the comments. I always try to get back to everybody. And if you got any ideas or anything I sh you think I should do better or differently, go ahead and let me know. But thanks for watching. I'm Adam and I'll see you guys on the next one.